Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of this show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. Federal law enforcement, federal and local law enforcement have an obsessive fear with one particular group named Antifa. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Not them. Not them, yes. Here they come, out of the darkness, screaming Black Lives Matter, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, according to this current administration and all law enforcement, Antifa is a coordinated group of anarchists whose goal is to, to, to bring the government down from the outside. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Clearly, Antifa is a very un-American nonprofit getting tax breaks out the wazoo for their descent. <laughs> Just kidding. Now, in reality, Antifa is, is what you call someone that is anti-fascist or against fascism, right? These, these people are against the totalitarian use of law enforcement to track people's movement and charge them for crimes they didn't commit. Right? They, they dissent against archaic and racist laws. These are people that stand in solidarity with the working class and ensure equality for everyone. They stand for the constitutional rights for all of us, not just a select few. Jesus was anti-fascist. True story. Now, this is one of those things that you either are or aren't. Right? If you are for the totalitarian control of all human lives under the ubermensch, then you're a fascist. <laughs> and I would wager to bet that most fascists are also narcissists who think that they're like the best human. Right? <laughs> and if you're openly against the anti-fascist movement, you basically declared yourself a fascist. And that's kind of what the Trump administration did, right? Tr Trump tweeted out that Antifa was a terrorist organization, just like how the FBI considers the insane clown posse a terrorist organization. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Look, guys, <laughs> the only difference between ICP and Antifa is clown makeup and an insatiable thirst for Fago. <laughs> That's it. The insane clown poshy is anti-fascist. Whoop whoop, everybody. Whoop whoop. <laughs> Fago, <laughs> official drink of the rioters. <laughs> the official drink of the rioters. Yeah, that's a sponsorship for, for that nonprofit that they started. <laughs> Look, 
at least at least this tweet was carefully thought out. It was a carefully thought out plan by the Trump administration, right? I'd hate to think that this tweet was sent without looking at any of the facts. Oh, wait. Turns out Attorney General <laughs> William Barr received an open source intelligent report right before the tweet was sent out about right wing white supremacist group that specifically stated them wanting to kill cops and instruct yep. members to make Molotov cocktails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After he received this report, Barr just looked at the people in the room and said, what flavor of cocktails do you think it is? <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's lemon? Because I really like lemon. I'm a big lemon guy. Big <laughs> lemon guy. But like this obsessive fear over Antifa makes sense when the entirety of law enforcement has become the long arm of fascism itself, right? Vadusha Tala of the American Civil Liberties Union or ACLU says, even though the agencies may include in some of these documents a disclaimer that they are not targeting First Amendment activities as such, if you look at what they're doing, it's clear that there is no criminal activity that they can point to to justify the overbroad collection, the overboard collection of monitoring of protests. They have no basis to do that. The ACLU is anti-fascist. But people have feared the Antifa threat throughout this administration, despite lack of proof of them causing any sort of violence at protests, right? The DHS claimed that these protests are our nation's period of darkness and that these people would, would take over government facilities and law enforcement headquarters there's literally no proof that they would do that, but there's repeated proof of right-wing violence, but they use that to target protesters, which is the ultimate form of gaslighting around, right? There's... <laughs> They've also claimed that socialists from Venezuela and Nicaragua are coming up to join these protesters, and they've made over... <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? They've made over... They're swimming in money. They're swimming in money in Venezuela with all those <coughs> sanctions we put on them. They're just, <laughs> they're just killing it. And not just that, they paid 200 arrests uh, for riot-related threats. And they also even thought of arresting the band Three Days Grace because they have a song named Riot. <laughs> That's a true fact, you guys. It's on their second album. It's a pretty good song. <laughs> Have they heard of the band Quiet Riot? Oh, don't even, don't, don't tell them. They could be watching this. <laughs> Quiet Riot. <laughs> I, do, I do kind of find it funny that they think that socialists from South America are coming to the States <laughs> to protest, right? Like, like the FBI, <laughs> like the FBI legitimately believes that socialists bought a plane ticket from South America, flew into America, the epicenter of this pandemic to join a protest, started a riot, and then flew back to South America. They got no other shit going on, man. <laughs> yeah, they got nothing else going on. You know, they're not trying to fight like American economic <laughs> sanctions slowly destroying their country or anything. They don't uh -oh. got that going on. Or instead of doing that, maybe they could protest in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement in America, just like they did everywhere else around the globe. <laughs> this fear of anti-fascism in American society, in society is so high that a San Francisco lawyer sent a letter to the police claiming that a terror group was looking for legal representation. The letter was sent by an activist that wanted to see if these lawyers were willing to represent falsely arrested protesters pro bono. The San Francisco lawyer goes on to call them pieces of shit and kept his identity anonymous over the fear of being disbarred. And guys, this fear really makes a lot of sense because if we know anything about terrorists is they're very polite and they're vigilant letter writers. <laughs> guys remember all those letters they wrote to take away our freedoms? <laughs> Postmarked and everything. 
Now, the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness has deemed an 80-year-old left-wing guild of lawyers an anarchist extremist subgroup. Lawyers that uphold the law and fight for justice and equality can't be anarchists, which is a political belief that hinges on the lack of laws in government. Because I really feel like we need to defund the police in New Jersey so that their citizens can like buy a dictionary. Very important. But as of right now, uh, Antifa is higher up on the terror watch list than ISIS. You know, that the actual terror organization that has public beheadings and has bombed cities across the globe. Yes, Antifa is worse than them because they're on the streets asking for things like justice and equality. According to the DS DHS, if we get justice and equality, then the terrorists will win. Quite literally. <laughs> Quite literally, right? <laughs> According to the DHS, protest and civil disobedience is worse than murder. I mean, sure, those terrorists extinguish the flames of life, but, but these folks in Antifa, are, they're not listening to platitudes, and then they made a sign, possibly with glitter. <laughs> <laughs> and they wrote a catchy chant, those bastards. Those bastards. So you tell me who's really worse, huh? And that has been your forkful of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on what, when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week.